Hi, I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Welcome back if you are a regular visitor here. And if it's your first time, a big welcome to you. And hopefully you'll enjoy what you see and learn today. And I'd love it if you could subscribe. So today I'm bringing you the all the astrological energies that we need to understand for the full moon in Leo, which is on the 5th of February. And this particular full moon, interestingly, is known as a micro moon because the moon itself is actually furthest, the furthest it can be from the planet at this time. But it doesn't diminish the powerful symbolic energies that this moon will represent. So let's actually dive in and see what that's all about. So what's interesting with this full moon is that Uranus, my big outer boy, our unpredictable planet of rebellion in Taurus, is squaring both the sun in Aquarius and the moon in Leo. And so what it forms is a challenging T-square. Now what, so that's like that. So it kind of looks like that. So what this actually does is it forms a kind of pressure cooker of energies and they can erupt in unpredictable ways. Now remember, this is a full moon. This is about change and it's about potential endings or resolutions, something that has to really shift in a big way. So tense energy is really around with this chart. Saturn, my big outer boy Saturn, our planet of boundaries, timing, restriction, Saturn is widely conjunct the sun in Aquarius, but it is quite a wide conjunction. But nevertheless, it is affecting this particular full moon. And Venus, our planet of love, relationship, the divine feminine in Pisces now is squaring, that's challenging. Mars, our god of action, war, and assertion in Gemini. So what we need to do really is dissect these energies and see how they can affect what's been unfolding on the planet and also how it will affect us personally. And don't forget, after I've done this brief overview, all your individual zodiac signs, which should be time-stamped, in the description box will take you to your sign for you to look at how this full moon is going to affect you personally. And remember to look at not only your, your sun sign, but also your rising sign. So let's have a look. So Leo, well, Leo of course is the sign of royalty and it's also the sign of, of say the entertainment industry and celebrities. And what it made me think when I looked at this configuration with this Uranus square, which is really kind of thinking, my God, what shocking things are going to emerge now? Um, it made me think of, of Prince Harry and, and Meghan Markle, his wife. And, you know, they've really had enough of their fair share, I think, at the moment of the limelight. And I'm sure they wouldn't really want to have any more share of the limelight currently. And but this full moon could bring yet another hidden revelation onto the public stage to shock us all. So hopefully for their sakes, it's not about them, but it's just that they're kind of somewhere up there on the, the list of possibilities. But it may be hidden secrets are revealed around a celebrity and interestingly, I say it's hidden secrets because the full moon on this chart is in the 12th house. 
So it's kind of hidden away. And because Saturn is widely conjunct the sun, this suggests to me that it's someone who has perhaps been around for a long time and perhaps up until now has managed to keep their private life pretty private. These are the sorts of revelations that can occur with this kind of full moon energy. The other thing we cannot rule out are Earth events caused by Uranus in Taurus squaring the sun and the moon because this kind of energy can cause literal earth movements in the form of volcanic activity or earthquakes. Now, I know New Zealand has been experiencing a lot of extreme weather with some quite devastating flooding going on and also landslides and mudslides. Now, the interesting thing is where I'm based in the central Mediterranean, we've had a series of, uh, of, of small earthquakes and earth tremors that have been going on over quite a wide area for some time now, for about a month, six weeks, which is quite interesting. And, you know, one can't help but wonder if it's a kind of precursor to something bigger that is going to come along and um, affect us. So that's, you know, just it's around. The other thing is that, of course, Uranus rules aviation. So we may see some problems in the aviation industry with this kind of energy, with, with maybe an airline shutting down, ceasing trading. I know there's a local one in the UK that has just ceased trading called Flyby. So, you know, that's also around with this kind of energy, especially because Uranus is in Taurus, which is about finance. So I think there's a lot of these smaller airlines are really struggling um, to, to get going again after the kind of three difficult years with, with the pandemic. And with regard to any kind of uh, warring factions on the planet, like Ukraine or the striking unions in the UK, I don't know what's happening in some of the other parts of the world, but I mean, America is still seeing such a huge problem with with gun crime and and with with the, the the divide between the police and the people and how difficult that is to negotiate and i do feel that because mercury our planet of communication is coming up it's not conjunct for this full moon but it is coming up to conjunct pluto in capricorn which is all about transformative breakthroughs. It's Capricorn. It's about structure. It's about grounding things. So the potential is there for this full moon to clear out a lot of ways of working that really don't work anymore. So how's this moon going to affect you on a personal level? Well, with regard to relationships, um, I'd avoid any serious talks around this full moon because that T-square from Uranus to the moon and the sun in fixed energy, I think, can cause breakups because no one is prepared to be flexible in their discussions. And because of that Mercury, our planet of communication, coming close to being conjunct with Pluto, the planet of transformation, it's like you might feel compelled to have that talk, to sort things out with a specific loved one. But I just think this is not the best time to do it because it's just you're, you're likely to be too heavy handed. And I really would just wait for karma energies before I'd have any important discussions. The one kind of relationship that could actually benefit from this energy is, is quite potentially business relationships because they need hard fact and definite decisions and ways of being quite ruthless on one sense of what's not working and getting rid of it. And so that could actually 
see firm foundations being forged because of the significant change that this full moon can bring. So what are my final thoughts before I look at your individual zodiac signs? All full moons bring opportunities for change. That can be on an inner level as much as it can be out there in the world. Sometimes a full moon, depending on where it is aspected in your chart, is more about inner reflection. And remember the event chart, this moon is in the 12th, 12th house. That's about inner reflection. It's about being brutally honest with the self, looking in that mirror. And maybe we need to be honest with ourselves about what habits we need to change. So, you know, Mercury moving closer and closer to Pluto can be a perfect opportunity for some inner dialogues. Maybe letting go of some fixed Leo ideals, that Leo ego that we all have in us. It doesn't matter whether we're whether the sign of Leo or not, whether it's our rising sign, moon sign or sun sign. We all have an ego of some description or another and the ego can be represented by Leo. So sometimes we have to let go of some of these fixed ideals or ideas we have about ourselves and just allow more flexibility into our lives. So let's now move on to your individual zodiac signs. Okay, so Aries. So this is for the sun in Aries or for the ascendant. This full moon for you is in Leo in the part of your chart that is very much to do with entertainment. It's to do with projects, children. So are there any projects that you've been involved in that just you can't seem to get together? You can't seem to sort it out? Because maybe the, the, the cosmos is actually trying to say to you, um, maybe this one's dead in the water. Maybe this is one that you just actually have to kind of, 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 of let go a bit. It's also, it could be that there are certain kind of ideals you have or ideas you have for children, if you have children. And you know, <laughs> we have to love them and let them go. Because in a sense, we can give them the guidance, but they have to decide for themselves. And they can only really learn how to grow up by making their own mistakes. So there could be something of that nature about for you with this full moon. The other thing is that you might be choosing to have a bit of a quieter time, having perhaps had a lot of social events and just thinking, that you need to just knuckle down and get on with addressing the year ahead and February, because February in general is almost like a month of preparation for what's to come in March. So now let's move on to Taurus. So this is for the sun in Taurus or for the ascendant, also known as the rising sign, Taurus. This is in the sector of your chart to do with your home and family. And it can just be with this energy there that you might just decide to get rid of some stuff. It can be as mundane and simple as that, that you might find you get a burst of energy and decide to clear out some stuff. I'd just be careful. That Uranus in your sign might make you throw the baby out with the bathwater. You know what we do when we throw things out, need them the following week, and we haven't needed them for years. So just be mindful of that if you are thinking of doing any clearing out. It's also a good time, I think, for you that if there have been 
any difficulties with, with family members to address them at this time and put any differences in the past. That's another good use of this energy to end any distance, to end any, any kind of, to, to end non-communication and start communicating again. Because that Mercury coming up to Pluto is really going to transform things for you. So now let's move on to Gemini. So Gemini, for you, this is very much about communication. What are you all about? Gemini, you're about communication. But where do you need to keep quiet? What do you actually need to be a little bit more circumspect with regard to how you talk about it? Because that Uranus in your 12th house, squaring this full moon, could make you say things that really some people find quite shocking. And it may be that you blurt things out that really you haven't thought through. Remember, you've still got Mars in your sign, making you kind of almost think too quickly. So just be mindful of that. Of that. You know, if there's anything important that you've got to you've got to say, wait for better energy, because you may just say things which really break a friendship where you didn't want it to break. Okay, let's move on to Cancer. So Cancer, for you, this is for the sun in Cancer and the rising sign in Cancer. This is about your finance. It's a full moon. It's squared by Uranus in your 11th house. What's this telling us? Well, it could be that some project you've been working on that you've really wanted to develop and grow. It could be that some unexpected events happen, which are perhaps out of your control, that cause you to change direction significantly. Now, what I'm thinking is that this energy in your second house is about some financial input you've wanted to do for a project. I'd just say, if there's anything like that that you're thinking of doing, just wait. Wait till this energy just shifts a bit. So really what I'm saying, and I'm kind of saying this, I think, to, to most of the signs, is... Um, this is not a time to make drastic decisions because if we do, I don't think it's going to work out in our favour. That's that's my, my deep sense about this. So just take time. Remember the sun in Aquarius, and that's in your eighth house of joint finance, is trying to help you to see that for... With, with regard to joint finance, you really do need, don't act on your own. I think that's what I'm trying to say. If there's money that has got to be spent on something significant, make sure you check it out first with your nearest and dearest. Now let's move on to Leo. So this is for the sun in Leo and the rising sign. Leo. Don't you just love it when the full moon is in your sign and it's all about you making you glow and shine, centre stage as usual. But is this a good full moon for you, Leo? Because Uranus up there in your career sector could be throwing a bit of a spanner in the works. What is going on? And do you have some conflict between a personal relationship and a business relationship. There could be unexpected events that happen with, within your career or your passion that kind of affect both personal and business relationships. And you know, something has to give. 
Don't let it be you. My advice with this is take time out. Remember, Saturn is still in your seventh house. Saturn is asking you to take time to think again before you make any drastic decisions about telling someone it's over, whether that's in a business relationship or a close one-to-one -one relationship. Just take time out. Wait till the energies just calm down a bit. Wait for that Mercury to conjunct Pluto, to have some constructive talks, which will actually be much more fortunate for you. Right, let's move on to Virgo. So this is for the sun in Virgo or the rising sign. Virgo, this is in the sector of your chart to do very much with that inner you. Also that part of you that can feel sometimes quite trapped, alone, um, kind of needing understanding. And I feel that the, the, there's, a, there's an element in you at the moment, Virgo, that you want to break out. And there are just certain restrictions in your kind of life. And it could be to do with work, your working routine or commitments you've got to others. You know, sometimes it's it's sort of elderly parents or or, or our, child, our own children. But there's, there's, there's commitments to others that are preventing you actually breaking out and doing what you'd like to do. Don't despair. Use the full moon energy to think, wait a minute, let me look at this. What ways of thinking don't serve me anymore? Maybe that's where I can make the significant changes. Maybe you can start trying to really look at how you can take more time because you know, Virgo, you, you can rush at things a lot. You want to get things right. You want to have all the boxes ticked and the T's crossed and the I's dotted. But sometimes you're, 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 you're your own worst enemy. Slow down is really what I want to say. Saturn has been asking you to, to do that for the last three years in the sector of your chart to do with your daily routine. And I know you think, but I can't slow down anymore. Yes, you can. And just let this energy pass. Use it to really reflect on the inner you and see what behaviours you could change. Okay, now let's move on to Libra. So Libra, this is for the sun in Libra or for the rising sign. Libra, there is a sense here of you really wanting to connect out there with the wider world and things keep getting in the way. There's something about the, 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 the wish you have to explore, to explore foreign climes, to travel. You know, you've had Uranus in that part of your chart, the ninth house, for such a long time now. And it's it's really been kind of, um, it's, sorry, it's actually in your eighth house. It's, it's really been trying to kind of um, get you to make changes with how you structure things in terms of your sort of joint finances. A lot of you would have made very definite decisions. And this Leo full moon could see the closure of some project that you've been working on. And that actually may be a good thing. You may be really quite pleased that this is finally coming to some kind of, of closure. So um, again, like I've said to all of the signs, before you make any big decisions or launch into any important discussions, really think it through and take your time this month. I think that's terribly important. So let's move on to Scorpio. So for you, this full moon is in the part of your chart that's to do with your career. So 
it could mean, and, and often people ask me because I have a lot of, of people of, of sort of my generation who perhaps are retired and not working and they say, but I don't work and I don't have a career or I don't have a passion. And you know, the 10th house is about career, but it's also about our soul path, what we feel called to do. It's, it's like our vocation, our calling. So that even if we're not actually um, living, you know, having a career or living that out, there'll be something that we feel we are called to do. And you only you can know what that is. So for you, Scorpio, it's in this part of your chart where if you're working, it's your work, your career. If you are not working, it's your passion, your hobby. If you're not working on a passion or a hobby, it's that soul path. This is about you finding a way to shine light on the direction that you want to go in. What do you want to unfold this month, this year? Because maybe you need to have a little bit more kind of innovative thinking and have some dialogue with the nearest and dearest to, they could come up with something quite surprising. They'll just make you think and see things in a different way and see what habits perhaps that you need to let go of Scorpio. You know, sometimes because you like the last word, Scorpio, sometimes um, that's not always good for you. And it would be great if you can use that Mercury conjunct Pluto that's coming up. I am gonna do a separate heads up on that. It would be good if you could use that in a really constructive way. That would be very helpful for you for your work. Now, let's move on to Sagittarius. So Sagittarius, this is for the sun in Sagittarius or for the rising sign. Where have you been wanting to go that might get delayed? <laughs> it's in your ninth house, so I had to say that. But of course, Sagittarius, this is also your, your house. You are the ninth house. So there's also something here about your quest for knowledge, your quest for learning, your quest for understanding, and that something is a bit stuck because I think that Uranus in Taurus and that Sun in Aquarius somehow making this kind of T-square to the Moon in Sagittarius, a kind of um, keeping you locked in a way of seeing things which needs to shift. What can you let go of? What have you been doing in terms of, um, you know, uh, it, 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 enlarging your knowledge, your understanding and learning? That actually hasn't really been helping very much. Perhaps you, you're going down the wrong path. Maybe this is about saying, okay, I've tried that. Now perhaps I need to go down a different path. Because you know, if one path isn't working, then often things like full moons come along to just give us a little bit of a course direction. And that could literally be what this full moon is doing. It may be that you've been thinking about making a journey. And maybe this full moon is saying no. Not yet. This is not the right time to take that step. So there we go. Let's move on to Capricorn. So Capricorn, this is for the sun in Capricorn or for the rising sign. Capricorn, I think potentially this is actually, interestingly, of all the signs, a very good full moon for you. I think it's bringing closure for something to do with joint finances. And it's something you've been working on for some time so that you will be super pleased and super happy that it's sorted. There may be one more thing that happens that comes along to just shock you or disrupt things. 
But I do feel that's temporary because with sensitive and gentle dis discussion, which will come from Pluto and Mercury in your sign, you will be able to circumnavigate this particular difficulty to bring about the closure of this situation that you want to bring to a conclusion. So be patient because remember, things are shifting, things are changing. And with Saturn in the final degrees of your second house of finance, where the sun is, it's, it's going to bring the solution to anything that is to do with property, finance, anything of that nature, it will bring the solution. Either you get the idea or you know exactly what it is you want to do next, but there will be some kind of resolution with this full moon. Now let's look at Aquarius. So this is for the sun in Aquarius or for the rising sign. Aquarius, of course, it's in your significant house of significant relationships because this is, of course, your Leo house. And this is about um, the potential that you have for changing relationships in a positive way. Now, this could be you and a loved one because of unexpected events that step in that you have to face some realities which were a little harsh, a little difficult to kind of cope with, but it will actually ultimately bring a good result. There is something here about let go of what doesn't need to be part of your life anymore. Sometimes this can be people that perhaps we think have been helpful to us, but maybe they haven't. And that's not to say they're bad people, it's just they're not on the same page as us or on the same wavelength. So try not to worry about that. And my watch just decided to go off and I'm just gonna put it back on Do Not Disturb. So if you, if you see that on the camera, it's just a technical glitch and um, it's because um, it's because Mercury is still in its shadow face. I'll just put it down to that. But it might not have shown up on the camera. I'm not quite sure how these um, devices deal with that. So we'll see when I play it back, I'll see. But I'm not going back to the beginning to record all this again because the first time is usually the best time. But anyway, now I'm going to come on to Pisces, my lovely oceans of emotions, my fishes, Pisces, for the sun in Pisces and for the rising sign. Pisces, how, what is it in your daily routine that needs to really change? Because that is the part of your chart where it's really, really, really needs to shift because there's something about the way you are organizing your routine, which is not serving you well. And it could be that unexpected events happen, which actually push you into making the changes you've got to make. You know, sometimes what the cosmos does is it brings along a little, um, glitch like something that makes us slow down and stop like a, a, a cold or a um, upset tummy or just something to make us stop and get out of our kind of head and back into our body. Are you fully in your body Pisces, my lovely oceans of emotions? Because if you're not, you need to be. And then you will be able to make the decisions with the, the insight that you can have about the best way to structure your working life, your day-to-day -day routine, all the things that you have to attend to, all those jobs that you have to do, these routine things that are so 
annoying in a sense, like, you know, the shopping doesn't do itself, we have to do it. Well, actually, of course, you can get it online now, so, <laughs> but we still have to do something for it, but I think you get the gist of what I'm talking about. So anyway, before my device, my phone, my mobile does anything else crazy and brings things up on the screen, I'm going to conclude <laughs> this full moon video, this full moon in Leo. And um, thank you so much for joining me for the full moon in Leo video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And remember, if you would like to have a session with me for me to look at your astro astrological energies for this year and, and into the beginning of next, then please contact me via my website. I'm accepting bookings now for the, the second half of March. I'm more or less full in February, barring cancellations. But if you would like to have a session, please do get in touch. And please remember to like, comment and subscribe and all that stuff. Thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.